Alright guys, um, back with our four windows open. Um, in this video we're going to look at uh, objects snapping. Um, so we know how to create uh, primitives and now we want to be able to move them around uh, in relation to one another accurately. So to start off this exercise we're just going to create a couple of boxes. Um, we can make these uh, any dimension you want. I'm going to right click to get back into that tool. Uh, make this one a bit bigger. And I might make a different shape. I might make a pyramid shape here. Um, okay. I'm going to make a, a cylinder. And a cone. Again, these are just some random shapes. Um, using those primitive tools. Okay, you'll notice um, that if we want to move this box to sit on top of this box, we can only really do that using grid snapping. See here it's kind of not quite right. Uh, we'll have to go into our views, uh, look carefully and align that. That's one way to do it, but uh, as you move into modeling you'll notice more and more that your your models don't actually conform to the grid everywhere. You'll have curved shapes, complex shapes, um, shapes with specific heights that don't fit into one millimeter increments and that's where object snapping comes in. So instead of snapping to the grid like we've been doing, you're going to snap two different objects. Um, these two ob uh, options are down here. So we've got OS snap and that turns on this toolbar just here. Um, you can disable and enable that by clicking there. What we want to have is uh, a few of these highlighted. So we want end, uh, near is fine, point, mid, um, that will give you a midpoint. If you hover all over these, you'll notice it'll explain what it does. So center object snap, intersection snap, uh, perpendicular snap, it's not as interesting, and quad is pretty good too. Um, you'll get more and more familiar with them as you use them as to what snaps to what. Uh, but in this case, um, what we're going to do is we're going to actually turn off grid snapping and we're going to look at the move tool in more depth. So because we have all these snaps enabled, what we're going to do is we're going to type move. Um, we'll select this object and we're going to right click or press enter when done as the command line is instructing. Okay, the first thing is select a point to move from. So you'll notice that the cursor is now snapping to all those things we specified. We've got a mid, near, end point and intersection, mid, near. So those are those selected options and if we highlight more of them it'll find more uh, key points. Um, so in this case we're going to do it from this end point. Um, now when you click be very careful to make sure that the correct uh, point is selected. Um, this just means being cautious and always being observant. So click that point and you'll see now we can move this around. Uh, we can snap that bottom corner anywhere we want. End to the point of this cone. Uh, in this case we're going to do it to the side of this cube. And now that's really accurately in position. Okay. Um, in the same way if we want to move more things we don't have to type move again. We can just right click. This time we're going to move this cone, I'm going to right click, we're going to select this point, quad. So quad uh, generally means the apex or the highest point of a round object. Um, so, uh, well the end of a quadrant I think technically. Um, so we'll just click on quad here. I'm going to place that on top of this by hitting quad. There you go. Okay, and we can move this object as well. Again, I'm going to click it this time, right click. I want to snap to this point just here. We can move it here. Now again, that's not in the right position. I want to rotate that around. So to do that, I can just click, I can hit rotate. And then because of object snapping on, we'll snap to this point here. We'll snap to this point here and then we can rotate it around. And again, because we've snapped to this point, when we rotate around, it just so happens, it's going to snap 
straight to that point. Okay, and now that's all aligned. Um, with object snapping turned on, you can also create shapes. So let's click a box. In this case, I'm going to start at this corner. Again, we've got an end, an intersection. I'm going to drag it out to here, end and intersection. And then I'm going to drag it down to this corner, end and intersection. It's going to snap every time. Okay, now you can see we've got the start of what looks like a, some sort of church. Um, we can create more shapes like this. Um, might create a cone. Um, in this case, I want it in the center of this square. So I'm going to go into my top view. And I'll just turn grid snapping on. Um, and you can see in this case, I needed grid snapping to find that center point. And I'll drag out. And you can see here where it starts to confuse the program. So um, this is where you need to be able to switch between grid and uh, object snapping. So in this view, it looks like we're creating an ellipse, a large flat ellipse. So if I do that, click, and then click again, what it's actually done is, is it snapped to this top corner, that second point where it was meant to snap. I'll delete that down here. So we'll try that once more, but this time I'm going to click to start creating the circle and then I can just disable object snapping. Click here and you can see in our perspective view that it's actually created the circle in the right plane. Okay, so uh, I'll do that again with a cone, sorry. And we'll do that here, here, here. Okay, now we have a cone. It's, it's inside this object. Okay, uh, what we can do is just to bring it out so we can see it is just using our gumball, lift it up, all good. And then we can use our move command. We want to enable object snapping, end to mid. And you can see now we have placed that object on top. Um, remember, um, we can also move multiple objects at once. And so to do that, um, we can click on this object with shift selected. Um, we'll click on another object. Now if I hit move, M-O-V-E, I can move it from this corner, for instance, down to here. Um, and there you can see how we can do things with multiple objects. Um, you can do that with any command. Um, shift is often used as what's known as a modifier key. Um, so you'll see it throughout all the software you use. Um, generally it'll make anything uh, into a straight angle or straight line. So in Rhino it turns, you know, when you're rotating it locks you to 90 degrees. Um, and it also will generally allow you to add to selections selections just like uh, in your menus in Windows or something. Um, so again, shift click and I can select the whole thing um, and I can just move that by typing move and there you go. Again, right click, get back into the tool and move it here. You can see I've created a sort of block tower. Um, all right, that's it for the move tool. Um, you can see that it's quite powerful. Again, um, the two ways we move things is quickly with the gumball. Um, again, that doesn't really offer much accuracy. It just lets us move things around in space. Um, and if we need to do things accurately, we use the move tool. Um, making sure that if an object isn't going where we want, checking what snaps we have selected, um, or if we need to disable grid snapping or disable object snapping to allow us to accomplish what we want. Um, but those two tools combined are really helpful and allow you to locate things in uh, three-dimensional space really well. All right, that's it for this video. Thanks, guys.